Well, howdy folks, welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel if this is your first time. I'll bet the video's title got you to click today, but here's the thing, I'm not necessarily saying these are my worst musical creations, just that these are my probably least musically useful musical creations. That really doesn't roll off the tongue well. For Musical Miscellany, I'm Kale. Let's get into it. So I've built a lot of things on my channel and I always learn something from every build that I do. So nothing is truly useless, but uh, these things I'm gonna take a look at today are projects that I made and then I guess I've been pretty underwhelmed with since, even if I enjoyed making them. But uh, so here are five and I'm actually even gonna throw in a bonus one for you. So I guess here are six. First thing is this, it's the nail violin. And uh, this is something I found out about. This is actually an old design, uh, you know, been around for quite some time. And you basically take nails and you pound them into a wooden box and then you take a violin bow and pull them across the nails and you get sound. Yeah, and I even took and put a piezo pickup in there and a jack so that I could amplify it. And in the video, I actually plugged it into a modular synth and I got some pretty cool sounds out of it. But here's the thing with this, it's really hard to tune because the way that you tune it is you have to pull, uh, push the nails in uh, farther and you get a, a higher pitch and then as you pull them out, you get a lower pitch. But then what happens is inevitably you need different sized nails and you can see some of these have multiple holes because I have, I've had to change nail sizes to get it to work. And then you really, maybe you can just kind of see this, you have to put a lot of rosin on these nails to get them to vibrate with the bow. Otherwise you just like, I don't know, I was pretty underwhelmed by the nail violin. Not sorry I did it, but you probably won't see this in a lot of my videos. Next up is the diddly spoon. Now, this was a wooden spoon that my wife threw away and I rescued it from the trash and then decided to turn it into a one string instrument here. And from that aspect, I love it. I mean, I love taking a piece of trash and turning it into something musically useful, but how useful is it? I mean, look at this little short scale. It's very hard to play accurately because the scale is so short. Um, and it ends up having a really high pitch. And regardless, I did use it on a track and I really liked the way that track turned out. But I highly doubt I'll be using it, you know, in the future. It's just not that musically useful. Um, but it was a fun save. Next up is this carbon mic that I made. And I did a video where I actually took both the uh, passive mic and the active mic out of an old telephone handset and made a separate mic out of each of them. Well, this is the carbon mic. And so that's the thing with a carbon mic, it has to be powered. So I ended up having to put a nine volt in here. And then maybe you can just kind of see this. Um, I actually had to figure out a circuit so that I was able to strip the nine volt offset out so that I could power the mic without sending power out to here. And so there was a lot of work involved in this little thing. I ended up putting a little switch in here. There's a little LED right over here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But in any case, um, so I did a ton of work on this, a ton of prototyping and, and it was fun because I love doing that kind of stuff. But when I got done with it, it doesn't sound as good as all my other passive mics. In fact, I actually did a video on lo-fi mics and I thought this was the worst sounding of all of them. And it was definitely the most work to build. So I don't know if there was a great return on investment, but dang, it was fun figuring that out. And speaking of microphones, I have to bring in the hula mic. Here she is. Now, this is made out of a hula hoop, uh, a fast food container, some bungee cords and some binder clips. And I actually followed an instructable to make this. And like, it's genius, like it really is. It's got a piezo pickup here mounted to the back. And it's a great like idea to put this thing together and you know, just turn a hula hoop into a suspension microphone like this. And it works. I got me a hula mic and I made it here today. And I made this hula mic from stuff you might throw away. It's such a pain in the butt. Look at how hard it is for me to even get it in the screen right now. Like it's so big. Um, and while it was a super fun project, I don't think I'll probably use this all that often because you gotta like work around it. It's so big. Anyway, fun project, but way too big to be useful. Next one, the Psycho Knob Kazoo. Now, 
This actually was a project that, you know, I ended up having to do two different takes on this one to get it right. And uh, watch that video if you're curious because it's actually a lot of information in there. And, you know, I'm happy with, with the way it came out considering how ridiculous the idea was. But that's just it, it's still a ridiculous idea. An electric kazoo, I have made several different electric kazoos. An electric kazoo is not necessarily a bad idea, but why does it need a built-in preamp? Because what happens now is, you know, you have the distortion in the preamp here of the kazoo, and it makes it harder to control the distortion, and then you get a lot more feedback because your sound waves are coming back and going right back into the kazoo. And this is a feedback monster, whereas if you can just use, you know, a regular, like, passive setup on there, plug it into the amp and add the distortion at the amp or even at the recorder, you get a lot better um, you know, effect than trying to add it right here at the kazoo. So this didn't end up being very musically useful, but man, I was glad when I did it because like I said, I had a completely failed attempt before I got to the right attempt. So the Psycho Knob Kazoo, even though it was a heck of a lot of fun to build, probably won't get used all that often. So that was five, but I mentioned that I was gonna throw in a bonus one, so there's six. Here's the sixth one right here, it's the Popsicle Stick Kazoo. I did this as an episode of Kazoo Fridays. Um, it was a craft project for kids where you take a couple popsicle sticks, a couple pieces of straw and a couple rubber bands and you make a kazoo out of it. It's not musically useful at all. So that will probably never end up on my channel. So there you have it folks, five projects that are not all that musically useful, but you know what, I don't regret because you learn from your mistakes, you learn from every project that you do, and uh, that's what it's all about. So if you like this content on the channel, I really hope you will hit that subscribe button for me, and if you like this video, just give it a big old thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.